Uh, hello, my name is Kalti Vasquez. I'm a student at FIU, and this is a program I designed for Dr. Tansel uh, from the FIU Mechatronics Lab. And the objective is to create a uh, sweep signal to go across a small copper pipe. And this is being done using LabVIEW and a USB 6210 uh, USB board and a, uh, a signal generator. Now this has an external input so we can start off the sweep and here we can start our start which is a 1 kilohertz our end is going to be 50 kilohertz and it take 5 seconds. Uh, the program can be manipulated to change the time between 5 seconds to any time that you'd like. It can be as short as long as needed and our signal is going to be coming out and going to be starting out at this end of the pipe and going to be collected at this end. Uh, the theory is that we could detect that there's minor notches or holes or dents all depending on uh, what frequency is being affected and uh, to what amplitude. So the program here, just the basic layouts uh, at this upper left hand corner we just have a quick, uh, just a small little digital output that shows our output that's coming out of the machine and our input that was what we're getting back. Uh, this has a volt peak to peak and frequency. Uh, there are some times where for some reason the frequency can shift. Uh, we have the percent that we're actually getting back, the percent loss and the gain in dB. Uh, in our setup tab we can have a test run for a certain duration of milliseconds or we can have an infinite test. We just click here it turns to infinite. Here we have sampling rates in case we want to do more sampling uh, at slower speeds we can actually get more information out of it but unfortunately uh, we would need to have a slower wave and finally data logging uh, here you can turn on and off the data logging uh, here we'll turn it on and the test will just put a video that's what we'll call it and the comments and where we're gonna save it and finally and uh, we'll just start off the test we have three graphs the first one is the output that's going to be created from the signal generator. The second one's going to be what we're receiving on the other end. And this last graph is going to be the gain in decibels, which will be negative because there's going to be a loss. There is no, there's going to be no gain in it. So you can see here it's sweeping. It takes a full five seconds as it's been programmed. And here we have our values come out, which we'll go over now. Uh, so this is the final graph that we got. Uh, this is extremely zoomed out so you can't see much. But now as we zoom in, you can see that the graph is, the amplitude is changing and it's also being modulated. Uh, I'm not sure why it's modulated, but it seems to be a constant frequency. And we can keep zooming in and we'll end up getting to the sine graph that's in the middle. In the bottom we have the decibels. And of course they're negative. So again, those are those three graphs, and these three graphs are instantly saved in this file here, which gives us everything uh, as a chart, which is then instantly exported to a Excel file. Uh, the Excel file has the name and time on the first page, and on the second page it has all of the information of all the points which in this point will include the, the amplitude and the frequency of the source, the amplitude and frequency of what we're receiving back, the gain, and the percent of the signal we're receiving back. Uh, this last test had 1,060 points, uh, which we can then graph in Excel or uh, have to manipulate the data in any way, find maximum and minimums. It could all be done through Excel or saved on another format if needed. Now, in addition, what we can also do is run an infinite test, which is normally good for if we want to remove the sweep and just have a certain amplitude and a certain frequency. So right now we'll just start off with six kilohertz. And we could run it just at six kilohertz. We can see the six kilohertz wave at the top. And what we're getting back is also a six kilohertz wave where we can see up here it says it right there on the right but we have a lot less amplitude as you can see the amplitude is only 0 
0 25 volts peak to peak instead of the 2 volts peak to peak that we were originally getting and right now I'm just going to touch the pipe and you'll see that there's a large change in the signal and I'm going to touch it right now as you can see it's, there's been a huge generation here uh, most likely because my body can actually transfer uh, noise or produce noise and as it is a noise chip or piezoelectric chip it's uh, altering to that noise so again I'll just lay my finger on it and as I'm getting closer I'm even adjusting the noise level and if I actually grab it we'll get a large shaking in almost everything that's there uh, in addition, what we have here is we have a threshold test. Uh, right now it's, it's on. And we can change the maximum amplitude if we're looking for an amplitude of 0. Point, uh, let's say 20, uh, 0 0.025 or a certain percent received back or, I mean, or if we just want a specific gain that we're looking for, we can put negative uh, 85, let's say. If any of these three values are activated, this light will turn on. The LED here is red because it's currently below that. And same thing for the other two. Well, these are above right now, so we're looking for the opposite for those. And again, I just grab it. And as you can see, we have a change there. And all this information is still being saved on the Excel file. We can always go back. Uh, in addition to that, all this information is being held with a timestamp, as you can see on the bottom right there. Uh, it's down to the millisecond and so when you come back to the timestamp or when you come back to your time your your chart here you can track it down to the millisecond in a day so once a program gets saved it automatically gets saved into a separate file with all of the information and everything that we're looking for with the time down to the millisecond hope this is what you're looking for thank you for watching